In this lesson, we'll discuss how to create an integration test to verify the persistence behavior of our album class. Unit testing is about testing in isolation. We really want to verify that just that unit of work, largely independent of its collaborating objects, is functioning correctly. This is great for validating that atomic unit of work, but doesn't necessarily tell us if that unit properly integrates with the larger application. This is where we turn to integration testing. Integration testing is all about testing the correctness of objects interacting with each other. For instance, we can write automated tests that verify that our controllers correctly interact with other objects in the model tier, or that our service objects can correctly communicate with and parse responses coming back from a web service. We can still use OC unit to write these kinds of tests, but instead of mocking or stubbing the various dependencies, we'll let the components communicate as they would in the real application. The iMusic app's principal feature is it lets users manage a list of albums. To that end, we have added a number of persistence operations to our album class so we can easily find, save, and delete albums. It would be good to write an automated set of tests to verify this behavior, so let's create a new test case called album int tests. So I'll highlight our iMusic tests group, type command N, we'll select Objective C test case, click next. Call this album int tests. Once again, make sure only the iMusic tests target is selected. Click create. All of our persistence operations interact with a file on the file system. So in order to make sure that our tests are always set up in a proper state, let's override the setup method and see how we can get that configuration established. So I'll override setup. We can use the same test data that we've been using all along in our app, but use it for an integration test. I'll first get a reference to the path of that resource in our bundle. I'll create a file URL for that source path. I'll then get a collection of URLs that will contain our documents directory. Create an NS URL for that destination location. I'll delete any existing file that is currently in place and then copy the clean version to that location. Performing this setup will make sure that immediately prior to each one of our tests being executed, we'll put the data set for it into a known state. Let's start with a test method for our find all case. Now that's probably the easiest scenario we have. Let me just import the album class. So we'll simply call the find all albums method. And we'll have an expected count of 12. I know there's 12 albums in this collection. And then just do an assert equals saying the count is equal to 12. And the test is a little bit brittle in the fact that if we ever changed our source data set, added a new record, or removed a record, this method would fail. But this is probably an okay thing to do for the time being. Let's next test the album save album method. We'll start off by finding the original count of all the albums. So with this data set, it's currently 12. We're gonna make this a little bit more flexible so it's not quite so dependent on the specific data set. We'll then create a new artist, create an album. I'll set some default properties on there. We'll just give it an album ID of 2000, the name Abbey Road, and then set the artist. We'll then call save album, so this is the actual method under test. We'll then get all of the albums by calling the find albums method. I'll call value for key path, passing in the key path of album name on our albums collection. And this is using kind of a magic feature of Objective C that will look through that collection of albums and pull out just the album names into its own array. I'll then say ST assert true, and I want to make sure that the album names collection has got the string Abbey Road in it so that we can be assured that our album was properly saved. Then finally, I want to check to see if the album's count is equal to the original count plus one. Doing this will make our test less dependent on that source data set. So we're not really concerned about the specific count or specific albums that are contained in that set. We just want to make sure that if we save the new album, it's one more than what we originally started with. We type command U to run this test. And we can see it succeeded. Just to verify, I'll change this assertion just to see what happens if this fails. So we can see our test failed, saying 13 should be equal to 12. I'll set that back to what it was, 
and our test succeeded. All right, finally, let's test out our delete functionality. I'll start off by finding all of our albums and then getting a count of how many we have at the beginning. I'll then get the first album in that collection, create an NS number with that album's ID. I'll call delete on that album, relook up the albums again after calling delete, and then assert that the album's count should be equal to the original count minus one. And like I did above, I'll do something similar using this value for key path method. This time I'll pass in the album ID, and that will return a collection of all the album IDs. I'll use stAssert false to make sure that that album ID's collection doesn't contain that deleted album. Let me run it, and test succeeded. In this lesson, we saw how we can use OCUnit to write automated integration tests. Unit testing is a great practice that comes with many benefits. But validating that objects work properly within a larger context can often be even more important. You should now understand how to write integration tests with Xcode and OCUnit.